Hi, this is Archit and in this video we're going to be talking about why the governments across the globe are racing towards the CBDCs. Well, is it because of the innovation in the private sector in the financial world that has caught speed and is disrupting the world? Yeah, I'm talking about crypto. But first of all, let us understand what is a CBDC or Central Bank Digital Currencies. Now, it's a new form of central bank money in a digital format denominated in the national unit to the account that is a direct liability of the central bank. Now, CBDCs can be classified into two. The first one is the retail CBDCs. Now, retail CBDCs can be held and used by individuals or firms for day-to-day -day transactions, including purchase of goods and services. On the other side, wholesale CBDCs are held by eligible financial institutions and are used for financial market payments, for example, interbank payments and settlement of securities and currency transactions. But why am I talking about this and doing this video? Well, it's because CBDCs are being looked upon as the base for the future monetary system. While I was researching for this video, I went through Bank of International Settlements annual economic report of the year 2022. But wait a minute, what is Bank of International Settlements? Now the BIS or the Bank of International Settlements is owned by 63 central banks that are representing countries from around the globe that account for 95% of the world GDP. Now the bank is based in Basel, Switzerland. Now I was deeply interested into something when the countries that are accounting for 95% of the world GDP are building the future of money. So let's take a look as to what is happening with the CBDCs in the global financial hemisphere. So the first project is Jasper Yuvin. Now this project got completed in May 2019. Now this project involves Bank of Canada and Monetary Authority of Singapore in collaboration with JP Morgan and Accenture as technology partners. Now the second project was Project Eber, which got completed in November 2020. And this project involves Saudi Arabia Central Bank and the Central Bank of United Arab Emirates with six commercial banks with three from each jurisdiction. The third project was Project Prosperous. This involved the Bank of France and the Bank of Tunisia. Now the fourth project is Project MAS, which involves the Bank of France and the Monetary Authority of Singapore in collaboration with JP Morgan as a technology partner. Now the sixth project is Embridge. Now this project involves the BIS Innovation Hub Center in Hong Kong's South Asian region, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, the Digital Currency Institute of the People's Bank of China, the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates, the Bank of Thailand and private sector partners. Now the seventh project is HSBC. This project got completed in December 2021. The experiment involved the Bank of France and HSBC in collaboration with IBM as technology partner. Now the eighth project was Project Jura, which got completed in December 2021. And the experiment involved the Bank of France and the Swiss National Bank in collaboration with the BIS Innovation Hub and a group of private sector firms comprising Accenture, Credit Suisse, Netizers, R3, Six Digital Exchange and UBS. Another project was Project Dunbar, of which the Phase 1 got completed in March 2022. The experiment involved the BIS Innovation Hub Centre in Singapore, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Central Bank of Malaysia, the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the South African Reserve Bank. Another project is the project which is run in China, which involved eligible commercial banks, PSPs, telecom operators and end users. Now this project is a special project. This was known as Sand Dollar. This was operated by Central Bank of the Bahamas and the Sand Dollar was launched in October 2020 as the world's first CBDC. Then there's a project called D-Dash. D-Dash is the CBDC issued by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank in the context of a pilot. E-Naira is the Nigerian CBDC issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And the list goes on with the Bank of Korea, Russia, etc. If you count these countries, France is running some multiple projects on CBDCs. Countries like France, UAE, Canada, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, Switzerland, Hong Kong, Thailand, China, South Africa, Australia, Malaysia, Bahamas, Caribbean, Nigeria, they all are working towards achieving the goal of a successful CBDC experiment. But why are these countries running towards their experimentation with CBDCs? This is primarily because of three reasons. Number one is the decline in the use of cash. Number two is big tech's market dominance and concentration of personal information. Number, and number three is the rise of global stable coins. A few people have also argued whether these CBDCs are required or not. So where does India stand in all of this? 
Well, RBI in India has announced that they will launch a CBDC project next year, but I guess they are right now observing as to how these experiments mature over a period of time. The process of introduction of CBDC is going to be slow so that there is no disruption in the finance and banking system. Well, the race is on among the nations in the world, but what needs to be seen is that which set of nations will complete the CBDC experiment successfully and implement them in their own countries. Well, will stable coins be a threat to CBDCs or will they get regulated? Well, I'll talk about this in my next video. Until then, if I've made you aware about the CBDCs, then do share this video. Also, you can connect with me or follow on LinkedIn for more conversations on technology and innovation. And subscribe if you want to.